the, the last few minutes of, of the bidding auction was absolutely nerve-wracking. Hi everyone, today I'm gonna tell you how I flipped a car on Bring a Trailer and made a hefty $20,000 profit. If you follow my channel, you know that back in December, I purchased what I call a garage find, an 18,000 mile 1998 BMW 540i, the E39 generation, probably the most desirable BMW generation uh, of all. And I only purchased it for $8,000. My idea was to daily drive the car and enjoy it and eventually manual swap it. But as I got to know the car, I realized how unique and pristine it was. So I, so I kind of felt bad putting miles on it and, and diminishing its value or potential resale value. So then I decided that I wanted to sell it. I reached out to uh, Cars and Bids. They quickly accept, accepted it. But then as I started doing more research on cars and bids, I realized that uh, there were just too many dealers flipping cars out there and it was kind of getting too diluted. So I reached out to Bring a Trailer Peeper and I'm gonna give you a timeline of events of how it happened in case you wanna sell your car on Bring a Trailer because there's one important caveat that you have to be aware of when you sell your car on Bring a Trailer. So. On January 20th, I submitted my car on Bring a Trailer and it was approved. I was also told that the car needed to be registered under my name. So when I purchased the car, the seller handed me a signed title. I had it, uh, but I never took it to the DMV to register under my name because it was sitting in my garage. I still contemplated what I wanted to do with it. A month later, I finally got the car registered they bring a trailer asked me for a photo i sent them a photo and i also sent them uh, some write-up details uh, and a walk around video that i did and you all or most of you have seen i also set up a professional photo shoot so bring a trailer gives you two options to list the car one i think it's a, it's a fairly affordable option where you list the car and you supply your own photos or for uh, 300 extra dollars they can supply you a professional photographer who comes and meets up with you and takes photos and, and uploads them wherever they need to be uploaded. So that's what I opted for. It was 300 extra dollars. Now, two weeks later, uh, I was told that my listing is in uh, process and uh, I should expect a draft in about one to two weeks. Another week later, on March 8th, I was assigned a specialist to my listing. And then uh, another week later, a draft of my listing was sent in. Uh, I decided to remove a couple of items, uh, remove a couple of photos, uh, edit the listing. And then uh, two weeks later, my listing went live. Now, I decided to go for a no reserve listing because in my mind, I was $8,000 in this car. So if I got anything over $8,000, I'd be happy. And also the, the number that I had in my head, and I told my wife when we purchased the car, I said, listen, when we buy it, technically if I wanted to sell it, I could, I could flip it for double. So I had $16,000 sort of reserve in my head. But, it, but then I started contemplating. I said, okay, if I, if I put a reserve of $16,000, that tells the potential purchasers that the car is worth only $16,000. Anything over that amount is just crazy money. So after sort of going back and forth with myself, I decided to put a no reserve and boy, it worked out for me. So on March 8th, I listed the car and right away I got an $8,000 bid. $8,000 and then uh, $8,200. And then uh, the $8,000 person reached, uh, reached out to me and I had a conversation with the person. He said, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm local. I potentially want to come by, check it out. I, I don't know if, if the car is worth that much, but I'll still come by and check it out. I said, okay, fine. I gave him all the details. He, he, had, some, he had the video. And then the biddings started going uh, higher. 8,500 again uh, by the same person on the same day. Then the same day, another $9,000. So I said to myself, okay, well, I can pretty much come out clean. And then sort of the listing stalled. Uh, I was answering a bunch of questions from people. $9,000, same day. Uh, people asked me clarifying photos. Uh, they, wanted to, they wanted to get additional photos of the cluster, of, of, of the radio unit, and I did. I even posted additional videos, which is important to reply. As you list the car or bring a trailer, it's very important to stay engaged and 
and uh, and sort of answer anything that potential purchasers uh, might be able to uh, any questions they might have then March 22nd so two days later $10,000 bid I was happy to be uh, to be breaking into a five-digit number and then again answering people's questions uh, a few days a few days later there was a small bidding war where it went from 10 to 50 to 10 750 in my mind wow this is great uh, then $11,000 on on the 25th and then uh, again I was answering people's questions uh, then 11 250 11 5 it was going 11 750 again that was all right right before the uh, b before the, the the end which was on a Saturday and then the bidding went up to 12 12 50 uh, and then the bidding stalled for a little bit and then uh, as I was answering people's questions the bidding started going up so it went to from 12 and a half to 13 and in my mind hey this is great I almost doubled my profits uh, people were asking a lot about the tires uh, the tires were I believe original tires on the car and even though they were perfect no cracks or anything the car sat in the garage people were very concerned about the tires so I took detailed pictures of the tires and there was one commenter who said and I, I don't know where that person is but he said seriously if, if if someone's buying an expensive car like this they're not concerned about the tires they they, they, they know that it's gonna cost them a thousand dollars or so to get to get the tires replaced and after that I feel like that person really helped me out because the bidding really took off it went from 13.5 to 13.750 to 15,000 I said oh my god I can't believe 15,000 then 15,250, and we're almost at the home stretch uh, <laughs> because the listing was uh, ending fairly soon. Then 15,5, again, answering a bunch of questions. And this is where things really get interesting. It went from 15,5 to 16,5 to 17,5 to 18. And then from 18, it jumped $4,000 up to 22 I said oh my god 22 holy moly my wife's favorite number that this is it we're probably gonna sell it for 22 and mind you that was towards the end towards the end of of your of your bid and bring a trailer has this really interesting feature where at the end of the listing where you when you're two minutes into the listing and you're getting a bidding war the listing resets itself. So when it comes, when 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 the listing sees that there's there's a lot of bidding activity going on, and and the time is running out, running out, the listing resets itself for another two minutes. So the the potential purchasers have another two minutes to decide if they want to bid just a little higher. So so. In that way, a car will not necessarily, you, you will not lose the car if you sort of, if you're not quick enough or, or people want to bid in, in last minute and outbid you. So they, this gives really the opportunity for the buyers to put you their best foot forward and, and bid on the, on, on the car and, and put really, really the highest amount. And it really worked out in my favor because from 22, in a matter of minutes, it went to 23, 24, it's between these two individuals, uh, Tommy and Adam. 23, 24, 25, and again, I'm beyond myself when that's happening. 25, 540, I think that person wanted to put the 540 saying, hey, this is probably the end. The, the last few minutes of, of the bidding auction was absolutely nerve-wracking. I was in the middle of renovating my house and my brother-in-law and my dad were with me and were watching it on my phone. It was absolutely surreal. But then, in really, seriously, the last few seconds of the auction the uh, the bidding continued but it finally settled at twenty nine thousand dollars let's see come on there it is yeah oh, 29. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Tommy went up to twenty nine twenty nine thousand dollars from my 1998 BMW 540i with only 18,000 miles it was purchased by a person who lives very close to me and again at the end of the auction I was super super happy my dad and my brother-in-law were high-fiving it was absolutely great so this is what happens when you sell the car and you you find you find the highest bidder and this is what bring a trailer does they send you and the purchaser an email the purchaser first thing the purchaser actually has to do is pay the percentage whatever that percentage is I think the purchaser paid on this one I think like 1600 or so uh, uh, a fee a buyer's fee if you will and then all bring a trailer does is sends you the seller 
the purchaser's contact information and vice versa. And that's it. That's all they do. They don't make sure that the purchaser has secured funding. They don't, they don't do anything of that sort. They basically send you the contact information and they walk away. Now, a lot of people might be uncomfortable with the situation. I was a bit uncomfortable with that, to be honest with you. So if you are selling a car and bring a trailer, you've got to make sure you're aware of that situation because once the auction ends, you're pretty much on your own. So I picked up my phone, I called the person, I congratulated Tommy on, uh, on this new vehicle. Hi, hi, is this Tommy? Hi, hi Thomas, this is Thomas. I just wanted to congratulate you on the, uh, on the car. And Tommy actually ended up being a really, really cool guy. Oh wow, there's a wild turkey in my driveway. Holy moly. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta take a picture of that. So after going back and forth, we arranged for a wire transfer. So I sent him a picture of the title. And uh, after that, he wired me the funds. I waited for the funds to clear my account, after which they did. He came by and uh, actually his proxy came by and, uh, and picked up the car. It's just too perfect to no, mess around with. So. And after it was all said and done, I made a hefty $20,000 profit. I put in about uh, $150 to repair the cluster. I also paid uh, $600 or so to have it fully detailed and, and ceramic coated and a couple of little uh, miscellaneous things here and there. I filled it up. So it cost me about $1,000 uh, in, um, in, in expenses. But at the end of the day, sort of by accident, I made $20,000 thousand dollars flipping a car on bring a trailer now there are two lessons here the first one being do not get attached to a car even though you might fall in love with a vehicle and you have all these plans for it there might be other better vehicles out there for you and two if you're listing your cars on bring a trailer or any auction sites for that matter it really pays it absolutely pays to do a no reserve auction because it doesn't put a, a limit out there for potential purchasers of what the car is really worth the sky's the limit uh, the car at the end of the day is worth what a the highest bidder is willing to pay for it so i am very happy that i made my twenty thousand dollars that money is going to go towards uh <laughs> renovating the house but i am uh pretty busy with my project cars. I actually purchased an American vehicle, which I'm going to uh, reveal uh, fairly soon. But having that empty bay in the garage means I have more time to tinker with this car, with the Porsche. I've got a check engine light here, so we're gonna be tackling uh, that fairly soon. But anyways, I am a super, super happy camper and I hope this sort of explanation was sort of helpful. If you are in a situ similar situation where you are finding yourself wanting to flip a car, this is what to expect. But anyways, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope this was somewhat helpful. Now I'm gonna go for a quick drive in my 2017 M3, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye. You can never get tired of this vehicle, I gotta tell you. As much as I love driving the Porsche, I'll never get tired of driving this car. It's very wet outside. Let's see if we can get any traction. Ah, a lot of shake. Do you get wheel hop? Do you get wheel hop? Seriously, this wheel hop, when the tires are cold, is quite bad. I hope I'm not the only one who gets wheel hop. Okay, are you a believer in TLG mud flaps? Check this out. We just drove through this wetness and grime. Look at the side of the car. Bam, so clean. Same thing with the back ones. If you have an expensive diffuser, these will protect it.